But it must have been daunting, deciding whether to spend the rest of your life with someone you hardly know. I lived in Pakistan for 10 years, and I had wanted to tell a story that included some of the kind of experiences that I'd had. She spent 10 years there, married to Imran Khan and spending, you know, all her 20s when other people were running around London working and doing different things here. She was actually sitting in Pakistan in a very different lifestyle, bringing up her kids and immersed in that whole life, which I think to be able to express and write about, it, it's the kind of subject matter that people were going to really want to see. I really enjoyed the script and I thought it was very clever. In my time living in Pakistan, I saw a lot of very successful arranged marriages. I even helped arrange some. And even though those marriages didn't start with love, they often ended with love. And I was interested in the idea of a completely different approach to finding the right life partner, to the one that we are more familiar with in the West. This modern world has confused the idea of love and confused the idea of intimacy. And there's something so fundamental about the search for intimacy. And that's what this film's about. Who's the lucky lady? Don't know yet. Wait, what do you mean? I'm going old school in this one. I'm getting an arranged marriage. Huh. Following this idea of marrying a stranger and really f exploring what you're looking for in love and how to make a relationship work and what's really important, everything in the script is something, you know, Jemima experienced or something she saw or something she knows really clearly from her own life and her own experiences. So I think that really comes alive. I'd never written a script before and it took me a really, really long time to get it good enough to actually show somebody. Jemima had been doing work on it and work on it and work on it and as screenplays do, it had suddenly become this incredibly funny, warm comedy with a great deal to say about arranged marriage, of course, but also about the meeting of cultures and calling upon so much of her personal experience. Hi, Joey. Alaikum uh, salam, Auntie Aisha. <laughs> what? It's, you still can't say it. It's... There you go. Oh, that's exactly what I just said. I didn't really set out to write a comedy or, or anything. I just wrote a more joyous and colourful Pakistan. We tend to see a darker, more frightening depiction of the country that I lived in with my children for a decade. It's so important in today's world, where everything seems to be so sombre and so dark, to get something which is light and makes you feel good. And suddenly the drama in itself lifts with laughter. It's when you're very emotional, you will start to laugh because you feel so emotional sometimes. Comedy accentuates emotions. The director is Shaker Kapoor. He made it a much more moving film. He's interested in the truth and the heart and the emotion of the film. When we were first started rehearsing, he would Skype me every day. He would just call me and just, he would just talk. He was just trying to find the character, you know, unlayer it and, and get the feeling of it. And, it's just such a lovely way of working when you have that time. I feel that he has brought a gaze that is Asian, which I think is so important because otherwise you could have just taken an English director to do it. Just getting that crossover person sometimes has a different eye on it, but obviously he does know this world in depth as well. He's not known for his comedies, so he can bring the drama to it and the fact that it's not just a British cast. This is a rom-com. It's about intimacy, it's about love, but it's a family drama too. The most important thing for him is connections. To playfully connect these people is his great joy. How is this any different from, say, dating apps? Well, I guess you could say it's kind of like a bespoke 3D halal Tinder operated by parents. Shazad is similar to the character that I wrote. He's just got an ease about him and he's incredibly charming. Shaker and I met with him. He talked about coming from a specific village in Pakistan that I happen to know and about how he felt about arranged marriage. I gave her my whole life story. She gave me her whole life story. You know, we know that word. It's just a privilege to be in a movie like this. I knew I had the right actor because he believed in everything that we were talking about and he experienced it and he had the ability to emote it and to bring it out. 
a little fact that he's a really good looking guy and I knew he could become a big heartthrob. He's perfect for Kaz and he brings a lot of his own history and his own life. I think it feels personal for him. It was clear that he really related to the issues that are explored within the film. When I left drama school, I met Shazad. I did a play with one of his best friends and then I just, that's like 10 years ago. When I got the email and it said Shazad is playing Kaz, I was like, okay, I definitely want to do it then. <laughs> we, me and Lily are best mates. I've known Lily for like 11 years. Getting to work with one of your mates, it's just a dream come true, really. If I win this rally, right? Yeah. You're doing the film. <laughs> oh. Ah. oh, yes! God. We just keep laughing at each other going, we're doing a film together. <laughs> you see a real ease between them. I think that you really believe that they have a kind of history of friendship. Lily is a very good actress. Often she did things that completely surprised me. She's going deeper into the character because it's her now. She is Zoe now. Lil is just wonderful. No, I couldn't be happier playing her mother. It feels sort of totally natural. You could have told me that outfit made me look like a pile of dirty washing. <laughs> Not now. Emma just came in, saw it, and just ran with the role. She brings such a kind of life force and passion and kind of bonkers energy to Kath. It's shopping, shopping, stay, shopping, stay, stay. She's completely non-PC, and there's something very freeing about it. Oh. Wasn't it just so wonderfully exotic? I felt... I felt like some sort of glorious concubine. Exotic meaning good foreign rather than threatening Yeah, foreign. exactly. She's just had us in stitches on camera and off. She's learnt up all these Urduisms, the inshallahs and shabash. Shabash! One of the things that really attracted me to it was to play with really new people who I loved meeting. We really have got some of Asia's greatest actors in this. It's a key element to the movie and to Asian households across the country. You know, you have to get that right. The way they've cast it is just perfect. Sajil Ali, she's so sensational and she's a really big star in Pakistan with a huge fan base. She's just the most beautiful, incredible actress. It's just been a gift to have her. Shaban Azmi, who's really loved in India. She became the character. She has that ability that she will make other actors believe that moment. Shabana is just absolute queen. I'm the cultural consultant on this very positive documentary on arranged marriage. Great, you can just pretend I'm not here, sorry. I love the script. I have done a lot of Pakistani mothers in uh, British films and television, and they're always in the terrorist victim mother bracket. And so something that was funny and lovely was a joy to work with, I can't tell you. The combination of Shaker directing it and Shabana Azmi brought something more profound and more moving. We've been trying to act it very naturally. We wanted to stay away from sort of like comedic portrayals of Asian families. There is depth to this movie. It's not just a sort of comedy. There's actually a lot of kind of of struggle in it. Jemima's, I think, processing some quite dark experiences within this, and I think that's what gives it its edge, actually. How are we different? Yes. Are you serious? Please. For a start, you don't get asked every week where you're from originally, or how often you go back to Pakistan. You're British. I'm, I'm British born, which we all know is just code for non white. British, you know? Brit ish. And I'm always asked, uh, where are you from originally? And, you know, things like that, which in today's world are becoming so common. So I'm really grateful that this film is not about terrorism and its links, and Islam is just seeing it in a, in a very happy way. This is one film that everything in the production design is telling their own story. Now, this is a tough thing to do, but very intuitive, very intuitive. And then, of course, I had great support from my production designer. I had wanted to show a slightly different Pakistan, not a place that is normally depicted as colourful and fun. The colours are absolutely wonderful. I've loved wearing everything. What we wanted was that you open the film and you think this is really colourful, really vibrant. And as we go on the journey through the film with Zoe, she's mostly in blacks and whites, sort of monochromatic in the midst of the Khan family. And obviously that they've had such an influence on Kath. So she's really colourful. When we get to Lahore and we get to the Mendy, it's even more lavish. 
All the wedding scenes, everybody's incredibly bejeweled. There's a very special look. There's a very important cultural aspect to everything that happens. Getting that right was really important. I suppose the most sort of culturally vibrant scene was probably the wedding. It feels like you're in Pakistan. There's a huge tree, jasmine tree, growing up the stairs at this crumbly old palace house. The production design and the lighting's coming in. It looks like a you know, Pakistani sunset. And you're like, how are they doing that? And you suddenly feel like you're in Lahore. dancing and music and color and you get these really vivid worlds coming alive alongside each other. The dancers and the drumming was just so extraordinary and I just sat there and thought this explosion of life was such a privilege to be part of. Emma was breaking it down, she was brilliant, she was fully dancing, <laughs> like it was so good. Prep is everything with a big scene like that. I mean, you've got to do them really fast, you know, it's really fast. Perfecting my, my Hollywood, Hollywood, Bollywood thingies and you, I turned out it all disappeared. And they did a good few rehearsals of this unbelievable Bollywood number and, and Naughty Boys doing music for it. This is my first time venturing into film music. When your mama told me the story about this fusion of Pakistani and English and just how exciting that could be. I knew the music won't be like anything done before. Immediately, I just thought, Nit and Sony. Originally, I had Naughty Boy and Shaker Kapoor come around to the studio and chat to me about music for this film. It's kind of a very simple love story in one way, um, but then it also has a lot of different cultural influences that need to be balanced in the right way. We tried many different approaches. Sometimes we go more Western classical music, but then it also has Indian classical music, North Indian classical music, and well, Sari Gama Pada Nisa is the same as kind of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. When singers improvise with sargams, they are actually uh, singing the exact pitch uh, of that particular note. So, so they'll be expressing that pitch um, as a word, and so it can be very fast as well. So this is something that um, Rahat Fatih Ali Khan does on, at one point on the song, um, and it's, it's quite stunning. It doesn't get more Pakistani and global than him. Like Rahat is like epic, there's like a lot of emotion, there's, the lyrics are profound. His uncle was about the most famous singer in South Asia and Rahat is his kind of musical heir. He also performs as himself in the film, in the Kavali music scene. So it's a big deal for like, you know, Asian cinema that if they're, they're doing the music, it's like, that's a huge thing. Uh, Rapunzel. I dyed your hair. I'm pretty sure I'm the witch in this very tale. It's just a privilege to be in a movie like this, you know. Um, the time it took for this kind of movie to be made, seeing a world that, you know, a lot of people haven't seen before and delving into it, not just sort of the surface, something that, that's probably not been seen too many times. There's much to learn. You know, you're learning about a whole new, different culture. I am. It's got layers. It's approachable and understandable and likable to different cultures. And that's the strength, I think. We've never had this before this kind of conversation about these real things. I would massively compare my <laughs> upbringing with Kazis. As a British Asian person, you know, growing up in England, you, you're constantly trying to reconcile the two worlds. It felt like quite a realistic portrayal in many ways of how, um, of how people interact in, in between different cultures. The idea of exploring the Western attitudes, if you like, of discovery of love and the Eastern way of thinking that love is something that develops. It's not just passion. There's something beyond passion, and it's only when you cross passion. Then what happens? It's hopefully a really heartwarming portrait of what the West can learn from the East and the East can learn from the West in terms of traditional societies versus Western society. And I really believe that both have something to learn from the other. <laughs>